Good afternoon to, to everybody. So we, we have just listened Marcello to explain us to generate animal models. So just to, to modify the germline. What I'm going to talk to, to describe right now is the use of the, these models, models of human diseases, just uh, as a therapeutic uh, tool, just to to find the protocols to to cure the disease that we have created in the models. So we are talking now. Just uh, I'm going to talk now about uh, somatic modification, not germline modification. So our our group deals with with animal models, and we are mo mostly focused on, on animal model of disease, and we are trying different protocols ranging from gene therapy to genome editing just to, to find or to translate these therapies to or potential therapies to humans. So we, we are mainly uh, in, interested in inborn errors of metabolism, which are real genetic disorders that uh, actually result from mutation in some metabolic pathway, which uh, could produce just or the accumulation of a toxic substrate, or the deficiency of a product that results in a disease, or the activation of alternative pathways resulting also in, in the disease. So some of these uh, inborn errors are related to biochemical processes that uh, occur in the liver, and this is the organ in which we are interested in. Uh, and for many of them, Really, the, the the level of correction varies according to, to the disease or to the level of expression in, of the endogenous gene. And for many of these uh, diseases, there is no cure except liver transplantation. And, and the therapies that uh, are available are just, uh, just to, let's say, to control the disease without addressing the real cause. So, so some of the, the manifestations or, or the, let's say, the, the therapies that are available, as I mentioned, are liver transplantation or hepatocyte transplantation, but obviously this has also some limitations because um, the survival of the, of the organ after, uh, after 10 years is only about 75, 80%, and the patient, so this means that we need retransplantation of the organ or in the worst of the cases, the patient does not survive more than, than 10 years. So you, you can imagine that replacing a, a full organ just is a very tough uh, question, also because there are immuno immunocompatibility problems and, and uh, also because the patient has to be under immunosuppressive therapies for, for all the life. So enzyme replacement therapy is, a, is an approach that is possible in some of the of the diseases, but has some limit that is given the a recombinant enzyme to the patient to replace the missing activity. And uh, the, the, the point is that they have to be administered with this enzyme all life and they may have some immune response to the to the protein that is a recombinant protein and the cost are really very high. We are talking about 400, 300 thousand euros per year per patient. So one possibility then is uh, gene therapy and genome editing that in one shot eventually we can cover uh, or we can correct the, the, the problem. So not all the, the diseases are, best, are suited for, for this type of therapy. So we need a, a disease that is caused by a single gene, a single organ involvement is much easier because we target only this organ. So the availability of animal models is really essential to set up this type of, of technologies. And as I mentioned before, just the level of uh, correction is variable. And since still we are at the beginning of the genome editing uh, era, then we are not so efficient in order to get very high levels. So we need a disease with relatively low level of expression. And uh, obviously, we need to, to have a test to validate uh, the, the correction. And uh, well, the, the wide range, the, 
the levels is likely to be efficacious and not toxic. Uh, some, the, the diseases that can, we can classify the diseases according to the damage. In some cases, we have diseases that with liver damage as this one, so they are not suitable for for um, for therapy. And the ones that are more suitable are the ones that have only expression in the liver and no parenchymal damage, as the ones that are, I am indicating here. These are the ones that we are mainly dealing in our lab and also another other important characteristic is that if the disease has extra hepatic expression probably the the genome editing will not be enough to correct the the phenotype so as i mentioned we are focusing the, in one of these diseases the the one we are focusing real is related to bilirubin metabolism in in which we have a bilirubin that is a byproduct of the heme uh, degradation in which uh, in the liver it is converted well it is converted to unconjugated bilirubin and then in the liver is converted to conjugated bilirubin by this enzyme UGT1A1 and this step is necessary to eliminate this product that is if it is present in high amount is toxic and when this enzyme is not present then we have accumulation this is liposoluble, uh, unconjugated bilirubin is liposoluble that accumulates in, in the brain resulting in permanent brain damage and, um, and death of the patient if it is untreated. So uh, according to the mutation, obviously there is a residual activity. The most severe one needs um, liver transplantation in some moment of the life and there is one therapy that is phototherapy that converts this unconjugated bilirubin into a photoisomer that is more soluble. But this cannot, can, cannot be given for life because the efficacy is reduced over time and finally has to, to receive a new liver to, to be cured. So as I mentioned, we are planning, we are doing um, gene therapy. The first thing we have done is just to construct a model. So you can see here this is a model in which this enzyme ha has been, the gene has been mutated, resulting in a null all allele, and then the, the absence of conjugation of bilirubin, so the, 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 the animals are drawn, these are high, very high levels of bilirubin. You can see here which are the mutant animals and which are the wild type. There are brain damage and cerebellar damage as well, and importantly, the animals die after a few days if they are untreated. So in order to, to do gene therapy or genome editing, the first thing we need to have into consideration is that we have to uh, bring the DNA into the, into the pathocytes. And the vector that is more efficient so far is a viral vector since uh, viruses are, are evolutionary, the, the task they do is just to insert, to inject uh, the, their DNA into the cells. And the one that works better so far is adeno-associated virus. That in the normal cell cycle, uh, it infects the cells and then it uh, delivers the DNA into the nucleus and a part of it gets integrated into a specific region of the genome. When we replace in our vector the, the, the the viral genes by our therapeutic cassette that could be just like this with a tissue specific promoter or a donor for doing recombination then this step is not uh, happening anymore and then all the dna or most of the dna remains as an episome in, in the in the nucleus and from this uh, episome then we have uh, expression of the therapeutic uh, protein we are lucky that there are different variants of AAB that have different uh, specificity in terms of uh, different organs. So some are more, let's say, it have more, uh, more marked tropism for, for liver, other for brain, other for, for skeletal muscle, and so on. So the, this type of strategy has been used uh, for in, in humans very efficiently. This is the case uh, with factor eight in which just a therapeutic cassette containing the factor 8, uh, the cDNA, 
controlled by a liver specific promoter uh, reestablish the expression of, of the missing uh, coagulation factor in the in the patients and we are doing uh, we have been doing sim uh, something similar in our in our animals in, in which we have done uh, transduced a therapeutic cassette using a liver specific promoter into the animals and this is very fast so after a few days then the animals are not anymore orange or, or yellow uh, and then bilirubin levels in the control animals are sky in, in the treated animals is very low and this happens only in the liver and not in other organs but what happens over time is that in, in this type of uh, strategy then the DNA gets lost and this is happening because during the, the early age of, of an animal you have a hepatocyte duplication because the liver is growing and at that point the episomal DNA that is not integrated DNA get lost and you can see here just the loss of uh, viral genomes and this is southern blood obviously there is also a loss of activity we have done also this in, in patients but only so far in adult patients we have already treated patients for uh, krigler najjar syndrome that is the name of the disease and so far patients are, are, are uh, safe and uh, they, they have a reduction in, in bilirubin content. But what happened when we have to treat uh, kids? So many of, the, of these diseases uh, have a pediatric onset, so cannot be treated later in time. So they need to be treated when, when the disease uh, is there at a very early age in which the, the liver is still growing and hepatocytes are duplicating. And uh, the point is that, as I mentioned before, the DNA gets lost, so it is not possible to do uh, this type of therapy because farther in time we are going to need re-administration of the vector. And this is not possible because there is an immune response against the vector. That is, uh, that is normally what, what happens when you inject a, an antigen. So one possibility is to do genome modification. Um, th this is the idea what I'm going to show you now. So uh, we have th this part is very simple. So the idea, the strategy is really from the is very uh, easy to understand. But if we don't add a, a nuclease, then this event, the natural event, is really happening at very low rate. And this, as we have seen before, it increases more than 100-fold when we generate here a double-strand break. But as we mentioned before, there are some off-target uh, issues that we have to consider. So since we have all those problems, we have off-target issues to consider. We have immunogenicity of the nuclease. We know that uh, this event is very rare. In any case, we utilize a, a strategy without the use of nucleases in, in the first step. So this is based on the recombination of our transgene in in the, into the albumin gene. The albumin gene is one, is the most abundant and most, uh, the higher expressed uh, gene in the liver. So by inserting this here, we, we will be sure that the protein will be expressed at, at very high levels. So we inserted actually the, the, our transgene by spontaneous recombination just upstream of the, of the albumin coding region just by moving the, the stop codon to the end of our transgene and inserted here a very specific peptide that is called peptide 2A that results when, when translation is going on then it results in the skipping and the starting of translation of a new protein, of a new gene. So after doing that, we obtain a fused mRNA and two different proteins, the albumin plus the EGFP protein. Uh, and, and as I mentioned before, so we limited the, the risk of uh, nuclease of, of target because there are, there are no nucleases to, to result in off target. So the, the transgene has no promoter, so it cannot be, even if it gets inserted, it will not a modified expression of other other genes nearby that could result in, in the in the production of uh, tumors 
as I mentioned before, the recombination efficiency is normally very low, but this is compensated by, by the high expression of the transgene. And this is what, what happened. Just from the molecular point of view, we obtained the expected results in, in which the albumin gene is fused to the, this is an example with the EGFP, and this is expression of, of the of the transgene into the albumin gene. You can see here that it happens at very low efficiency, but it, it is happening. When we tested this in, in, in our model, just by, by injecting a donor DNA containing the UGT1A1 transgene, then all the treated animals survive, but the non-treated animals die uh, as expected. And, but the, the, the level of bilirubin were much higher than wild type. The levels of wild type more or less should be between zero and one. And here we had about between five and, and seven. So it means that it was enough to rescue the, the, the lethality of the animal, but it was not enough just to, to completely rescue, rescue the phenotype in terms of activity and bilirubin levels. So we, we learned that uh, this, that uh, it was long lasting, that complete rescue lethality, as I mentioned, but we need to improve uh, the efficacy. So to do that, we use the, the Cas9. So we come here to the, Cas, the famous Cas9. But instead of using the, the Staphylococcus pyogenes Cas9, we use another one from another bacterial species, that is the Staphylococcus aureus Cas9. And why? Because this Cas9 is shorter. Than, than the Cas9 uh, from, from Pyogenes, and this is short enough to stay inside our virus that we use as transport into the hepatocyte. And also there is another characteristic, is the pump site that is different. So the pump site, we, talk, uh, we have listened quite a lot of pump site before, and the pump site of the Pyogenes is NGG, that is just a very frequent denucleotide uh, combination, Instead, so this results obviously in a higher number of potential of targets. Instead, the Cas9 from Aureus, the, the pump site is more complicated, resulting in less number of predicted pump site, uh, of target sites. So we did the same approach as before with a similar construct. Just we mutated the pump site in our donor construct in order to avoid self-targeting. Uh, of the Cas9 towards the, the donor contra or the corrected allele. And then after doing that, we checked first uh, with the GFP uh, construct in which we have obtained about a 15, 14, 15 percent of recombinant hepatocyte that we remember that we were talking about 0 0.5 in the best of the cases. And here we have about 15 percent in some animals we have more than 20 percent it means 20 percent of the hepatocytes of these animals are recombinant are targeted the amount of protein that is, that is produced is really very high so next we tested our animal model and in our animal model so uh, we obtained bilirubin levels here obviously all the animals survive the bilirubin levels were identical to the to that of the wild type animals for the duration of the experiment. We sacrificed the animals at uh, ten months, and you can see here that the amount of protein that is produced is really much higher than the one that is <coughs> expressed in the same amount of uh, protein extra of a wild type animal. So this means that the the system is really working. But there are other aspects that we have to consider. Uh, th this is just a picture just showing the efficiency of recombination that is, is a bit lower uh, respect to the one that we obtain in our uh, marker gene, the EGFP. Here it was between 3 and 3 and 4 percent, more or less. But as I mentioned, there are some aspects that we have to consider. One is just the histology of, of the animals, so we have to be sure that the therapy is safe. For, for the animals in order to be possible to translate this approach to, to a human patient. So the, the liver was absolutely normal in, in all cases. We also analyzed the on-target, and the on-target, it, it means 
uh, the, the efficacy of the Cas9 just to be directed into the specific site and what type of mutations we are doing in the absence of a donor construct. And you can see here that all the mutations are, fo are, are centered in the expected target site. And this is just a compilation of different sequences, but the frequency is not this one. The frequency is more or less, we have about 20% of, of the genomes were mutated, as, I, as we mentioned before. And the size of this uh, deletion or index ranges between three and, and five, so indicating that the albumin gene did not suffer a very big uh, modification in the case of absence of uh, HDR. And the, the PAM site, as you can see here, or, or the target site, is, after, is an intron. So the, this is a part of the safety of, of the design in which if we have mutation, modification in this region of the intron, probably will not affect the normal splicing of the gene. So we are not producing a knockout of the gene. So we also analyze the, the off-target effects. Uh, these are predicted sites uh, that were then analyzed by, um, by Illumina sequencing. And you can see here that uh, there are just a few, since the PAM site is more uh, complicated than the normal piogenes, they, they were not so many off-target, predicted off-target sites. And when we analyzed these, these sequences, there was no uh, off-target uh, activity in, in these uh, genes. So we are also doing the same approach, I am finishing, uh, the same approach for the factor eight, uh, factor nine cDNA, that is the gene that is mutated in hemophilia B. And you can see here that the expression is uh, very, very efficient. This is 100% that corresponds to the human population. So with this approach, we obtain even a higher expression of, of the factor nine compared to the human population, even 10 months, uh, 10 months after, after a viral delivery. So the conclusions are, are just that the procedure is safe. We obtain long, long life therapeutic efficacy, and then we can apply this strategy just by changing the transgene and uh, using the same donor vector and the same Cas9 uh, viral vector. So with that, I finish. So I would like just to thank the people who participated in, in this uh, project and the founding agencies that uh, really are necessary for, for, for research. So thanks for your attention. I am open for questions. <laughs>